Are you planning to run a marathon? If so, this video is for you because you're probably feeling a little nervous about it and so I thought we'd talk through the psychology of marathon running. I'm a psychologist as well as a running coach and so nice to be able to bring a little bit of expertise to uh, you all in this video. So we're gonna talk about three things. We're gonna talk about why am I nervous? We're gonna talk about pre-race strategies and we're gonna talk about in-race strategies. So we'll cover all three of those and you can skip around using the chapter markers in this video. So let's start then by looking at why am I nervous? If I'm thinking about preparing for a marathon, then what, what feelings are we gonna be dealing with? Well, it's perfectly natural to feel nervous when you're about to run a marathon and one of those reasons is that running a marathon is hard like it's a really long way it's the the challenge that most people kind of go for if they're looking to do a big run ultras are not some people do those but they're not really the challenge that everyone thinks of are they like when you think of a runner and you think they're a marathon runner then that has a lot of kudos associated with it because it's really hard and when you're trying to do a really hard thing, we don't know if we can do it. And a lot of confidence comes from seeing ourselves do something. So the first time we do it, we're really nervous. But once we've done it, we realize that we can do it and we get that confidence. And so it's very rarely as scary the second time around as it is the first time around. So if you're preparing for your first marathon, then you genuinely don't know if you can do it. You probably can if you followed the training plan, but nothing will give you that feeling of I can do it until you see yourself doing it. So it's perfectly natural again, just to be nervous until you've actually done it. It's the, the catch 22 with it. And of course it is a long way, like most of us don't do that kind of distance in our training plan. So maybe if you're you know, working up to your 5K or a 10K race, you might go out and do that distance beforehand very few marathon training plans have you run the full 42.2 kilometers before race day. Some do, but most don't. And so, again, we're wondering, can we make it that far? And of course, running is generally uncomfortable. Like, it, it hurts. It hurts our legs. It hurts our chest. It's not uh, whether we use the term pain or discomfort, whatever we're going to do, running is hard, right? Like it's not sat on the sofa watching TV. It's not all fun. It's worth it because we feel great about ourselves, but it is uncomfortable. And the idea of being in that much discomfort for probably going to take us you know, at three to six hours when we're, when we're running our first marathon, that's a lot of discomfort to take. I remember when I was doing the marathon outlaw, I got like 15 kilometers in and I was hurting so much. I was thinking, it's not just that I'm hurting this much, it's that I have another three hours of tolerating this pain. And that's pretty unpleasant. So I, I hope this section hasn't really scared you off or thought, made you think twice about doing it, but rather making it understandable why you are feeling nervous, because it's a hard thing it's quite uncomfortable for the entire time you're running it. And so naturally our body and our minds are thinking, mm, can we do this? Can we get through it? Are we strong enough? Are we gonna be able to do this? Everyone goes through it. And if you're feeling nervous, it's not necessarily because you haven't prepared properly. I don't know if you have or not. Um, or it's not necessarily because you can't do it. It's just because everyone goes through that worry, that fear, that feelings of anxiety before you do your first one. So what do we do about it? Well, let's start by looking at some pre-race strategies. So we want to build confidence that we can do it. And again, as we talked about, the way to build confidence is to see yourself do it. Now, that could mean running the full 42.2 in training, but it doesn't have to. But what you do want to do is make sure you're training properly, following your training plan, because if you see yourself get up week in, week out, go for those training runs. If you see yourself do those longer runs and do them successfully and go through that discomfort and show yourself that you are stronger, 
then that will start building up all of the confidence that you need because you've seen yourself do all of the preparation, you've seen yourself do all of the long training runs. And so by the time you get to that marathon start line, you'll already have three months, six months of showing yourself that you consistently go out and do the runs. And then you've just got one more run to do quite a long one but still it's the same as when you got up to do your long runs in training motivation is also super important here so we're only going to train properly if we're excited and if we're motivated how do we keep motivation well we want fun variety and goals so at training once you set a goal of course then some of the fun goes out of it because once we have to get up and do a long run then it's kind of less fun. So is there some ways you can make it more fun? By, for example, could you change up your route? Um, go run somewhere different? Could you make it social by going for runs with other people to make it more engaging and keep it more fun? Can you add variety into your workout? So again, changing the route is great. Going and doing different things like doing some intervals, doing some hills, doing some trail, doing some road. The more different you can make each of your workouts and a good training plan will tackle a variety of different things. Then that's gonna keep you engaged because you're not doing the same thing week in, week out, and therefore you're less likely to get bored. And then of course goals, so your goal is probably running a marathon, um, having little goals in there, like maybe there's some reward, you get to have a, a, a sweet treat if you finish your long run, something like that. Um, mini goals along the way to reward yourself and remembering why it's important to you. So also you've got your, your running your marathon goal, but why do you run at all is a really good question to ask yourself, is it? Is it because you want better physical health? Is it because you want better mental health? Is it because you want to show your children that taking care of your body is important? Set a good example. Remembering that kind of, um, that kind of higher level goal, uh, we might call it a value, I guess, um, can be really useful there so that even when it's hurting and even when you're not having a good time, you can remember the really wider, bigger picture of why you're doing this. Then we might wanna add some routines and mental preparation. So how can you prepare best? Uh, really understanding what you're gonna do on race day, for example, is really important. So uh, what are you gonna do when you get there? Um, how are you, where are you going to check your bag in? Where are you going to have those final toilet breaks? What are you going to eat before you start the race? And do that on your long training runs as well. So have maybe the same nutrition strategy, the pre-race strategy of, okay, I'm going to um, going to eat something at this time. I'm going to have my final wee at this time. I'm going to do a bit of checking in with my body and mindfulness at this time. Do those before your final couple of long runs and then do the same thing on race day so that when you get to the start on race day, you go through the same set of checklists that you did in your long runs and it just feels the same and it takes your mind off it because you're just following a script that looks the same as a training run and then you get to it and you just follow it through. Okay, let's look at some in-race strategies then. So once you're running, you're doing the marathon, it's feeling great, people are hopefully cheering you on, what can you do there? Well, we can do some mindfulness. So mindfulness is all about observing our thoughts. So, and kind of stepping back and, and looking at our thoughts without judgment. So a lot of the time we get very caught up in our thoughts and the emotions surrounding our thoughts. But if we can do some mindfulness and detach us, from those thoughts. So for example, maybe observing the sensations in our body. A lot of the time we're running along, we're thinking my legs are hurting, my chest are hurting. We can change that into something like, oh, I'm noticing that I'm getting these sensations from my legs, from my chest, or I'm noticing that I'm having the thought that I want to give up. It's very different from thinking, I want to give up, that's the thought, and if we just accept or buy into that thought, then we're gonna feel pretty rubbish. But if we can observe that in a more mindful way and think, okay, I, I'm noticing, I'm having the thought that I want to give up, 
then we look at that in a far more objective style. In the same way that we can analyze someone else in an objective manner in a way that we can't do with ourselves, we're almost trying to get that third person perspective, but for ourselves. Mindfulness works best if you practice it in advance. I do have some mindfulness practices on my channel, so you might wanna go check out that or check out my mindfulness for athletes course is a, a great one to do as well. Um, then we want to be using any um, anxiety management strategies that work well for us. Um, a key part of this is self-talk, which we'll talk about uh, in a moment. Um, but just, again, understanding why we might be anxious and having some responses to that um, we might need to make sure our breathing's under control. So if our breathing is getting too fast, maybe we need to slow down so that we can control our breathing because breathing very much linked to panic. And so it can become a bit of a cycle where we're breathing really fast and then we're feeling panicky and that's making us breathe even faster. So maybe we just need to slow down a bit, get our breathing under control. We'll feel a bit calmer, we'll be able to think a bit more clearly, and then we'll be able to make a judgment as to whether we speed up again or not. And then, so we can use, develop some self-talk to combat this as well. So that's the things that we say to ourselves, either in our head or out loud, both are useful. And it might be answering questions like, are we really hurting and we want to give up? And we remind ourselves with something like, well, we knew this would be really hard, but we, but I committed to keeping going anyway, or I, it was always gonna hurt at this point, but I know that I can push through because I've done all of the training. Or maybe it's just some encouraging phrases to say to yourself, you're doing really well, you're feeling strong, all of those are really good self-talk to say to ourselves when the negative self-talk of I'm hurting, I can't do this creeps in. Do we have that prepared response ready to go so that we can encourage ourselves and keep ourselves going? So to summarize, uh, running a marathon is awesome. I hope I haven't put you off in any way from this video. It really is. It's what, it's what we call type two fun in endurance sports. So type one fun is, is direct pleasure, sat on the sofa eating chocolate, immediate reward, but then you feel bad afterwards. Type two fun can be quite hard at the time, but then you feel great about yourself and about what you're doing and marathon running is often type two fun, but it is still fun, and generally you feel great about yourself. Maybe not straight after when you're tired, but you wake up the next day and the next day, and you get to be a marathon runner for the rest of your life, so it's really rewarding in that way. Um, and most people are nervous before they run a marathon, so if you're there thinking, oh, I'm panicking, I haven't, I've followed my training plan, but I don't feel ready, don't worry because that is a perfectly normal feeling. Most of the other people on the start line running their first marathon or, or even their second or third marathon are probably have similar feelings. So don't let that put you off, but do use the pre-race strategies and the in-race strategies that we've talked about in this video. Hopefully that was useful. If so, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're into running, if you're into psychology, then hit that subscribe button because that's what my channel is all about. And I would love to see you in another video.